Hello everyone, my name is Lauren Barnes and I am a PhD student at New Jersey Institute of Technology working with Dr. Anand Oza and today I will be talking about resonance, instability, and dynamical stabilization in bouncing droplet chains. So I'll start by describing the problem. So we have a fluid bath being vertically vibrated with forcing acceleration gamma and because of this forcing a small droplet can bounce or walk on the surface of the fluid without coalescing with the fluid. And we're gonna be considering a regime of gamma below the Faraday instability threshold, gamma F. So that just means that unless the surface is perturbed, it remains flat. And when a drop bounces, it perturbs the surface and thus excites a field of standing waves or Faraday waves on the surface. And in this way, the droplet self propels itself because when it bounces off of its own wave field, it deflects off the waves and thus propels itself moving in the X, Y direction. So this system is interesting because it's a macroscopic system that um, exhibits analogs of quantum phenomena. And now we're gonna consider a one-dimensional chain of five droplets, so positioned along the x-axis. And so our trajectory equation or system of equations for the five drops is given here. And basically what we're looking at is F equals MA. So our MA term is the first term on the left-hand side. Um, kappa is just the non-dimensional mass. And then the second term on the left-hand side is a drag term. Um, the right-hand side, the summation, is just summing over basically the waves created by all five of the droplets because the drops interact with not only their own waves, but also the waves of their neighbors. And then the integral is just summing up for each drop over all previous bounces. Now the J1, um, that's a Bessel function. Basically, that comes because we're assuming that the waves have the shape of Bessel functions. And the exponential decay term that you see there in the integral just says that the waves are decaying exponentially in time. And the parameters kappa and beta depend on um, gamma, which we also call the memory parameter. And that's because the how long the waves stay on the surface depends directly on gamma. Basically, higher gamma means the waves stay around for longer and lower values of gamma means they decay more quickly. Okay, so we're gonna consider equilibrium states of the drops basically just bouncing in place, not moving in the XY plane. So to this end, we plug in the ansatz, assuming um, steady state into the trajectory equation and we get the system of five equations and five unknowns. And then we're going to introduce this convention di. So d1 is the distance between drops one and two. d2 is the distance between drops two and three, et cetera. And we're going to consider um, the case of symmetric chains. So in other words, d1 equals d4 and d2 equals d3. So when we consider that and plug that in, we end up with just a system of two equations in two unknowns. So when we do a linear stability analysis about the resulting bouncing states, we find that there are both stable and unstable solutions for the lowest gamma considered, 0.66. And then also that the, the stable solutions go unstable to an oscillatory instability as we increase gamma. And this figure here shows four of the bouncing states, the uh, four stable ones for the stable bouncing states at the onset of instability. So essentially these, the dots represent the drops and then the arrows represents the magnitude and direction of the eigenvectors at the onset of instability. So this shows basically what phase they're oscillating in at the onset of this oscillatory instability. And now we're gonna consider the case of when we force the droplet on one end of the chain sinusoidally. So with the prescribed amplitude A1 and frequency F, and then leave the other four droplets unforced. So the behavior of the other drops, of course, depends on this forcing. It is influenced by this forcing on the first drop because they all interact with each other via the wave field. And then it also depends on the memory, memory parameter gamma, um, as well as the initial configuration. So which equilibrium configuration we put them in to begin with. So for each gamma and A1 pairing, we see, so these, these plots are um, simulation results that we got. So the x-axis is the forcing frequency F imposed on the first drop. And then the y-axis is the scaled um, amplitudes of oscillations of the other four drops in response to the oscillations on drop one, basically. And so 
we see here that for some resonant frequency f, we get this peak in the amplitudes of the other four drops. And this just says that there's some forcing frequency for which we get a resonance. And in the case of high gamma, so gamma equals 0.74, we can actually get amplitude, oscillation amplitudes of the other four drops that exceeds the imposed amplitude on drop one. So this is showing us that the drops effectively extract energy from the wave field. And another thing we note is that in the limit as f approaches infinity, the transmitted amplitudes of the other four drops approach zero. So basically it's like they're approaching another bouncing state. And um, so this is basically what's happening here is a new bouncing state is being dynamically stabilized by this rapid forcing on drop one. And to verify this, we plugged the onsets, the steady state onsets in for, into the trajectory equation for drops two through five, and then took the limit as F approaches infinity, which left us with this system of equations, which we solved using numerical continuation in the parameter A1, which again is the forcing amplitude imposed on drop one. So then again, we'll use the convention of the interdrop distances, di. And here, if we look at panel A of this figure, we see that, so the black square corresponds to the equilibrium configuration, the N11 configuration, and which is shown in panel B. So the blue curve is the wave profile and the black dots are the drops. So we started at this equilibrium state and then we increase the amplitude of the forcing on drop one. And we see that as we increase this forcing amplitude on drop one, the, the interdrop distances roughly stay the same except for D1, the distance between drops one and two, which increases a lot. And then at some point it actually, it seems to plateau. And the gray square in panel A corresponds to panel C, which is um, the wave profile and drop positions for an equilibrium state, but it's an un unstable equilibrium state. And so the gray horizontal dashed line in panel A um, is, it corresponds to the value of D1 for that equilibrium state, that unstable equilibrium state shown in panel C. So we see that D1 in panel A plateaus right at that value of D1 for which we have the unstable equilibrium state in panel C. So essentially what's happening here is that this unstable equilibrium state is being dynamically stabilized by the rapid forcing on drop one. And that is um, shown by the red square. So that corresponds to panel D. That's the wave profile and drop positions for the case in which we have the forcing on drop one that is dynamically stabilizing this formerly unstable equilibrium state. And that's a very interesting result. Another interesting result that we found from our simulations is that for higher gamma and higher A1, instead of the drop trajectories remaining in a bound oscillating state, they instead begin to jump chaotically around. So panel A shows their, their trajectories, panel B shows cycle averaged interdrop distances. So again, these DI values except this time we averaged them over one cycle of the forcing on drop one. And the horizontal dashed lines correspond to the interdrop distances for some of the stable equilibrium solutions, um, the, the N11, N22, and then N33 bouncing states. So we see that they sort of, they sort of jump between these equilibrium states, but they never really settle at any one. So this is, they're chaotically jumping around. And so in conclusion, we see that equilibrium configurations of five drop chains go unstable to an oscillatory instability as we increase gamma. And then we also see that we get a complex dynamics when we force the drop on one end sinusoidally. And specifically in the limit as F approaches infinity, we can actually have dynamical stabilization of unstable equilibrium states. And last but not least, we see that at the largest forcing amplitude and memory considered, um, we actually can get a chaotic dynamics happening as a result of the periodic forcing on the first drop. So yes, yeah, some interesting results here and thank you so much for listening.